and welcome to the Geek Club. And today we've got the uh, Sanyo VTC uh, 5000? Yeah, 5000 here uh, in the Geek Club. Uh, this is the one that we found actually about to get trashed. And uh, two previous videos where we do a repair on the 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 wheel inside uh, because it couldn't fast forward or rewind or something like that. Uh, when it wasn't playing, and we had to replace the idler wheel uh, using a tap grommet because <laughs> we couldn't get the original parts. Uh, you can see, it works reasonably well. It's just started rolling on that point there. Uh, at the moment, we still get random flashes on the screen now and again. Probably do with the heads. Uh, but it seems to work reasonably well. When it's cold and it's just started, uh, let me see. It does a lot of that. Hang on. When it's. Oh, that's my phone. Okay. Uh, when it's been switched off for a while and it starts to tape up again it's not doing it now but yeah it will flick all over the place for a few moments before it settles down <coughs> but not when it's been run like this one has for a while now I've taken the top off already because what we're going to do I don't know if you can see it let's have a, let's have a zoom in I think you can actually might yeah there's a mixture of clock artifact uh, sorry, clock artifact, camera artifact there, but that uh, clock is flashing rapidly, uh, and it's a common problem with these when you have problems with a couple of the capacitors inside the PSU. So I found instructions online, and we've got a couple of capacitors to replace to see if that fixes it. Uh, I will show you in a moment uh, where we're going to work on the PSU. Change the camera and have a look at that for you. Oh, it's rolling again. I think it's a mixture of tape. Sometimes when you put it on here, it improves it. But, not moment, but I do think this tape is quite tight uh, because other tapes don't suffer from that. So, yeah, that's going to be the subject of a future video. I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, but for now, let's uh, have a look where we've got our crate inside this. Okay. I'll get the tape running just for the hell of it. Uh, but let's have a look at what we're going to do. Right, this is the uh, this is the main PSU, and well, this is the PSU, and down inside here we have two capacitors, this one, and this little bugger here. Those are the ones responsible for the voltage to the clock. So if the clock's fla fla flashing, we've got to replace them. Now you can apparently do this without taking out the PSU, but for the uh, point of the video, and because I'm an awkward bugger, I'd rather take it out. So that is what I'm going to do now. And uh, I believe, just looking at it, hopefully it's four screws there. This looks like it's supported by this, by something. There's, there was a leg under there, I think. Uh, but it looks like it's these four black screws around it. I uh, don't know, think, doesn't look like anything's holding this side down. No, it just seems to be sitting on a bracket down there, so, there it is. So hopefully that's it, I'll have a clean around there while it's out. Uh, we'll get that out, avoid electrocuting ourselves, and uh, I'll be right back. Right, just to quickly show you, I have managed to extract the PSU. There was an extra screw on the side here which I had to remove so that's done there was also a cable uh, which ran this one which ran into no not that one where is it oh this one duh right this one ran into the clock at the front but it was well welded soldered onto the board here so I had to slightly loosen that off to get at it and it came out and all is fine so we'll get rid of this set up the solder and get these little buggers we found Okay, and here we are on the back of the PSU. Just uh, wait this out. And, uh, yep, you can see our two capacitor sites. Uh, this is easy. <laughs> as soon as you move the ah, C207, which looks like those two legs there. And C, looking for the symbol more, uh, 204, which is those two there. So, I won't run the camera while I'm removing them, but I shall be back once they are out. Okay, we have our two little buddies out. Uh, you can see the holes from where they were there. Uh, some there. And some there. 
Now, this is the one that came out of this one. And this had this little sleeve around it, fire retardant sleeve. Now, I don't know if this is glue or this has come out of the capacitor. I think I'm suspecting it's more glue for the jacket. Well, I'm going to try and get the jacket on the replacement. I've also noted that the negatives are on the output side here. So I shall be doing that next, putting the replacements in as a negative side. So always make sure when you're taking these out, you put the uh, polarities right, or you're going to bugger it. So I shall put the new capacitors in, and we shall see what we shall see. Bugger! Schoolboy error. It appears the original is... Uh, there we go. 100 millifarads, or whatever you call them, at 15, 16 volts. Uh, the one that's arrived, or I under ordered, is 100 microfarads at 100 volts. So, I'm going to have to wait for... Uh, luckily, I've got on order a bag, a general of general capacitors, so there'll be loads of different ratings. We should find one that fits, uh, so I'm going to have to wait for that. But, in the meantime, I may as well, as the soldering iron's hot, I may as well put this one in, so I'll do that now. Right, okay, uh, I've put that one in, and you'll see here. There it is. Oh, snug in its new home. Uh, gonna have to wait for the others to get delivered before I can do the other one. Hopefully, that should be in the next few days, and then I can get this back into service. So, I'll see you, hopefully, in a few days. Right, I've been a naughty boy. Uh, it says online that it's okay to uh, replace one with a higher voltage as long as it's got the same sort of ESR characteristics and this is way above the tolerances of the original so I think, oh god, come here little bugger I think it's safe to use this one, uh, this 100 volt one in there well, we're gonna find out aren't we, because I've just installed it Double checking, triple checking. I've got it the uh, polarity the right way around. Now it's all that's left is to install it back into the machine. So I'll be back in a moment. Right, what I've done, I've inserted the PSU again. I've not screwed it down. Uh, I've put all the cables in and plugged it in, ready to switch on and do a test to see if this has worked before I put the whole thing back together, if it does. So let's have a fire up. Ooh, wait, when does that? And Okay, let's have a look, stabilise the clock, and it's always going to be difficult to tell on the phone, uh, because, you know, these do flash on the phones, on cameras, but in real life, that is one rock steady clock, and maybe a bit brighter actually, so that seems to work well, so let's, uh, let's put this bugger back together, shall we? Right, and there you are. Can't see it here, but uh, that's one happy bit of gold. Uh, BMX, where we call them. I was just going to ask about a line that appeared on the bottom of the screen, but it's just disappeared as I uh, thingy. Yeah, there you go. All in glorious 12 inch Technicolor. Obviously, in real life, that looks better than what you've seen there. Still getting the flashes here, but I think that's related to. Uh, tape tension because that doesn't appear on other tapes and doesn't appear on all sections of this tape so I'm still going for the tape tension thing but we hope to do a video on that so uh, that could be fun a long video but fun so there you go has the beta cord up with its clock fixed you can't see it there because obviously it's strobing in the camera but uh, in real life that's one solid looking uh, Solid looking clock. So, if you enjoy this sort of uh, video, oops, and uh, want to see more like this, then please subscribe. And why not join me and other geeks, nutty geeks, in our Facebook group? Links down below. 
Not not? Thank you very much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. 